name is Daniel Wilson. We're here at the Farm LLC in Stewart, Oklahoma. I have a commercial aquaponics system. This is my second year running the aquaponics system. It's in a 30 by 90 greenhouse with a 30 by 30 watershed on the back of it. The aquaponics system itself is over 1,020 square feet of actual grow space. Um, I started in aquaponics about five years ago doing backyard aquaponics and we grew and grew. The reason we went with commercial aquaponics is we started with a hoop house in soil and we got some really bad compost that had picloram in it and that's a herbicide that has a 99 year half-life and it killed everything in our soil so we concreted the con put a concrete floor in and installed an aquaponic system. Our aquaponic system is a flood and drain system that is media based um, we have koi and tilapia in our system. Well, our primary fish is koi because it's a cheaper fish and the crops we've raised has been everything from carrots, radishes, beets and turnips all the way from to tomatoes, cucumbers and squash and everything in between. Last year we were given a vitex and a fig cutting. And we put the cuttings in the aquaponic system and it rerouted and then we transplanted them into a soil garden. My primary market is the Pittsburgh County Farmers Market which is about 30 miles away. I also distribute to a few grocery stores and a restaurant but my primary market is direct to consumer. Um, I have some consumers that come to the farm, buy directly from me. The most of them though buy at the farmers market. When I started aquaponics, I experimented with backyard systems from flood and drain to raft to NFT. Um, when we went to commercial, we would decide to go with the flood and drain with media because you could grow a wider uh, variety of crops. Um, you can't do that with NFT or floating raft. Um, this allows me to grow my from seed to full um, production in the same grow bed. I also start all my transplants for my hoop house and my soil garden in my aquaponics by directly seeding into it. These all these tomatoes here are from cuttings that were started from these tomato plants right here that were planted back in May of uh, this year of 2017. What I do is I plant my seeds. I can get about 4,000 seeds to 6,000 seeds to germinate in one grow bed and I germinate them thick and then at, when they're two inches tall I pull them out and I put them in six packs unless I'm leaving that plant in the aquaponic system. My other plants throughout the year I just do cuttings off my cucumbers and my tomatoes and keep them going so they're just clones of what I started earlier in the spring. These tomatoes are still blooming heavy. Um, this is really the third set of blooms that I've had on them that they come in waves. I have okra in the back um, right over there. They've been in there for about three months now. These grow beds are four foot by five foot. They're 18 inches deep, which gives plenty of grow um, space for large plants like tomatoes and cucumbers. We use an expanded clay that is specifically made for symbiotic aquaponics. Um, it's about half inch to three quarter inch diameter, which is great for seeding and it does not pack down. The grow beds themselves are 80 pounds of virgin food grade plastic that have a 30 year life. And these are husky rack and frames that can hold about um, 5,000 pounds. So you can get up on top of these racks and walk on top of the beds while you're trellising plants. These are peppers that were started two months ago and these are beets that um, were planted about a month ago. And the beets are almost ready to harvest. They have, instead of the roots growing underneath the soil, they grow on top of the grow media. This is Jericho lettuce. We're letting it go to seed. What we do sometimes with our lettuce that we're having problems getting a hold of the seeds that we want, we allow them to um, go to head. When the seeds fall down in the grow media, we go ahead and pull out the parent um, plant and then we smooth the grow media back out and those seeds that drop down will germinate. Um, we've planted only one crop of arugula in one bed and it has continuously kept on regerminating itself and we've um, for the past year and a half.
This is a bed of chives that we uh, um, germinated. Chives love aquaponics, and this is the first time we've uh, grown watercress, and it seems to have done really great in the aquaponics system. Fresh herbs in our area do not sell very well, so the amount of basil and other herbs that we grow, we're going to start drying it, and we can have it for a longer shelf life and distribute out to consumers over a longer period of time. We have tilapia in this back tank, koi in the first two tanks in that rear tank. We start off with koi because they're a hardier fish and since we didn't have heat in this greenhouse I was worried about the temperature difference. Koi and goldfish can be frozen and thaw out and be fine. You'll have almost lost, no loss. Tilapia have to be maintained at least 68, 72 degrees, um, but they stop feeding at 72 degrees. So for year-round consumption for pr produce, we've got to have a fish that will eat at cold temperatures, so we went with tilapia to begin with. Since we don't heat our greenhouse, we wrapped our fish tanks in insulation and we made hot water heaters, converted hot water heaters that would fit down into the fish tanks so we can heat the water to about 68, 72 degrees, which helps heat the rest of the greenhouse with the water flowing throughout the system. This is my solids removal. All the water from my fish tanks and my grow bed flow outside to a sump tank. My pump pulls that water from the sump tank and it's filtered through this polymer bead filter. Um, the polymer beads are food grade and they are also designed so bacteria can, um, can grow on them to help turn nutri um, fish emulsion to um, nutrients. Once a week I backwash this filter. My backwash water comes out this pipe and goes into a separate sump tank that I use to water my hoop house and my soil garden. When I, during the winter I heat my fish tanks. I have one of these for each fish tank. All it is is a hot water heater element, 1100 watt, 2 inch PVC pipe, and an ink bird thermostat. And um, all I do is drop it in the water and the thermostat regulates my temperature. It cost me about $100 to build the whole thing. For water quality test, I use an API fresh water testing kit, test for ammonia, nitrate, nitrites, and pH.